Alright, so before we do anything else, we'll just turn it on and so you can see what it does in terms of error lights and uh, sounds and things it makes. Uh, this projector is not turning on, so we'll have a look and see if we can work out why and do something about it. Doesn't sound good. We'll stop it there because this is pretty much where it stays. So it'll stay with the orange light on and that status light flashing. So we'll have a look and we'll open it up and we'll see how we can go. All right, so just had a look on the computer and we can also see uh, if we navigate to the IP of this, that uh, the calibration of the iris has failed, uh -huh. the error status. So let's uh, open it up and have a look. First step as well, it will disconnect the power and um, once we've got it open, plan is to basically see if we can see what's making that noise, which based on the error message, uh, I'm betting will be something related to this iris. Let's see if we can turn it on and get it to make that sound. doesn't want to wake up without the lid on. Someone's clever. It's probably a micro switch somewhere. Ah, lamp cover error. There you go, lamp cover on, it's happy. So, let's see. And let's listen and let's look. Let's see whatever's clicking. No, it's definitely right in here. In fact, It's this motor right here. So, actually, we'll wait for the fans to finish their thing. Okay, now I'll turn it back off. I reckon it's this motor right here because this is the bulb assembly. And the iris is going to be 
right next to it. So I think it's literally going to be this little stepper motor just here. So we'll see if we can actually feel it doing it, and then we'll know. It's definitely vibrating in there. Well, next step will be to wait for this to finish doing its cranky thing, and then we will take out the bulb and see if we can physically see the uh, mechanism for this. Alright, so let's just whip the bulb out. as well, just you know, tap something and get set. Okay, so this is the bulb assembly. Fortunately it's nice and shrouded, so don't have to worry too much about accidentally touching it. Sit that over there. Hold this aside. Okay, iris. Well, I don't see an iris in there. And while I was waiting for it to spin down, I had a look on eBay at this part, and you can actually buy the iris. Um, and that's definitely it. That little stepper motor on top there. This whole section here is is definitely the iris. Ah, oh, right. So the part number on eBay that I found is. Two four zero two four B one eight zero one one, and it's set basically to um, pieces of metal that just sort of come in on the sides like that from either side. So it's currently fully open, which is good. And I'm guessing it's fine because it's trying to close it. Oh, hello. All right, Cracky Child is happy for now. So, <coughs> let's have a look. So we've still got the power disconnected, which is good. So I think what we'll try and do is take this part out. Because just from the look of it on eBay, it should just slot right out. Okie dokie, well. Let's... So let's actually use this one just to whip them out. Oh no, they are too small so we need something a bit of a finer head. Alright, so I've got a sort of more of a jeweler screwdriver for this bit just because they're much smaller screws. Still got the power disconnected, just in case touch something I shouldn't. So let's just move it vertically. Right, so it actually includes that whole... Gee whiz. That includes a few bits and pieces there. So you can sort of see this part actually includes this and then there's this. You can see this side of it from the bulb, it sits in just like that. And uh, this screw here and this one here were the ones that I took out. I'm trying not to handle any other sort of these mirrory bits on it. So let's see how it works. Oh yes, there's the iris, 
Let's have a see it in there. Oh, okay. Right. So let's sort of leave it along by these bits on the top. Can I make it move? I honestly wonder if it's just straight up stuck. Okay, so basically um, you might notice there's sort of some little bits in here, it's sort of levers, hinges, um, and that makes the shut the uh, iris move. So what we'll do is, look, let's just move it over its full path of travel. Gee, I wonder if it's just some gunk in these little cogs. There's actually some little um, gears you can see there that make the whole thing work. So we'll just get some canned air on it, see if that helps. It'd be helpful if I didn't snap the top off my canned air bottle. sort of thing, just to try and get some of that crud out. So I reckon all you'd need is like one granule of sand probably to jam this whole thing up. Like it's not particularly difficult to move. In fact, you can buy the part on eBay. It tells me it's probably a uh, fairly high failure rate. So we're stuck fully open. So what we'll do is we'll just stick it somewhere in the middle because I'm guessing that when it fires up and calibrates, it basically just travels over its full range. So let's just pop in and let's just see if it works. Having been massaged around a bit. Just sit it in there, don't worry about doing it up. There we go. It's just clicked into its spot. Got that done up, got that done up. We'll pop the lid on. So that, there we go. Just sit in the little door there. That's wake it up. Get the LAN interface up. Just so we can see but the status lights look good. And let's wake it up. Hmm, it still sounds very clicky. It's not what we want. Time to try something. Let's see if it even needs this board. So, all right, that's it out. So let's uh, see if it works without it. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Just crank it open and leave it. Well, the status light says it's ready to start. That's always good. This will also work out whether it's that making a clicking sound. Same error message. Calibration of the iris has failed. Okay.
That's interesting. So it's clicking, but the things didn't move at all. So it's going to fault out in a second, I'm sure. <coughs> So that motor must be spinning and um, just not quite catching whatever it's supposed to catch. Yep. Vibration of the iris has failed. Yep, we know that. Mm, let's just kill the power. Alright. Okay, iris. Didn't want to move. Let's Just pop this apart a little more, shall we? Actually, you know what? Let's just lift this motor out. So this motor has two very small screws on top of it, which will need a much finer driver. Something like this. Very small. They're actually a lot like the ones on the uh, HTC, HTC Vive controller in terms of size. So let's just. There we go. There's our little motor. Our gear. Just doesn't want to move. Gee, it is very hard. No wonder it's getting stuck. as far as they go. Let me open them out. To all their maximum extent. Let's see. So there's three wires coming in on this board. That, that means the limit switch must be just on this little board just here on the end. off because I think that's just PCBs just sitting there. Yes it is. Uh, we'll just, let's put that off while we're at it and see. Is there a small screw again? Is it? Yes it is, it's just sitting there. So ah there it is. There's the little limit switchy bit, sort of obviously detecting that it arrives there. So it must just travel over its range when you turn it on, go from open to closed. I mean, so from whatever position it's in to fully open, I think is probably its startup routine. And then it gets detected by this and it goes next to it so yeah we'll just pop that back in see how we go actually we'll take these two screws off the side of this so we don't accidentally lose them in the guts of the thing if we do that because I'd really rather not strip this whole thing down to try and dig some screws out if it can be otherwise helped just take these out. I'm making a point of not touching any of these reflective surfaces on either side. 
you know what, we'll just give this thing a spray with some air too. Just from every bit, just to dislodge any crud that might be in there. Inspect this. That little gear looks fine. And there we go, that's in. So, this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. Let's see if it works first, just from having given it a fiddle. And if it doesn't, what we can do is pull the motor out and see if we can stick the uh, things in a place where they can trigger the limit switch. I just I done it online before, and uh, it's interesting. It seems to be the same reflective optical sensor um, that's described as causing this fault in an M260X projector. So. There you go, good design all around. Thanks, and we see. Okay, so fingers crossed. Hey, that sounds better. It's uh, what it did just then is it actually just moved. Oh, it's a bit turned on. Let's move this out of the road so it doesn't cook. This is about to get real bright. So it just moved that uh, the uh, iris bits basically to their maximum um, position. And that was it. That was all it did. Actually, there's not really any picture up, so it'll be fairly dim. But there you go. Now it wakes up, now it's all fine properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off. Uh, let me focus that out a little more just to spread the heat. It melts a hole clean through it. Alright. Once it's finished turning on, then we can turn it off. Because unfortunately this projector won't let you turn it off until it's all the way on. You know what, actually, um, I'm going to reconfigure this slightly and we're going to give this um, thing a good run because there are some situations where it would adjust the brightness and clearly adjust the dynamic contrast and then you just hear it clicking. Um, it makes a big clicking sound until you went from a bright to a dark image. So what I'm going to do is just pause for a second, spin this around, point at the wall. Uh, so we can actually get an image out of it and I'll have a play and see if this uh, works again. Because if, if that's something that just gums up every now and again, that's not, it's not too bad as far as quick fix goes, but you never know. We'll turn it off and on a few times and see if that uh, works. We are off. So I'll just put these all the power again, just before I, before I go sticking my fingers in it. And we'll just screw this little motor back. Okay, that is in. So what I'll do is, yeah, we'll just pop this, rest this on top, make, bearing in mind not to pull this cable off because this cluster of buttons are all connected. Yeah, we'll just rest that there, we'll spin it around. So we want to listen and we want to hear 
what's going on with this part. You can project onto the wall just there. So we'll plug in like that. And hey, let's go VGA because why not? Just leave the monitor plugged in. Little reach. And we're using VGA at church, so might as well test what's actually going to be happening. Okay. Alright. Fingers crossed. And on. That sounded great. Again, heard the motor run just then, at the very start. Second display. Standard desktop, single display, final display. So let's go second display. Projector. Whoa, there we go. That's good. Ah, it's still set up for like the roof. That just worked, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So what we'll do is just turn off and on again half a dozen times, and uh, if it works, then we'll consider that it's fixed. pull it out, put the screws on and then plop it back in. Let's start it again. Put some light on it too just so you can see it. Great. That's what we want to see. Okay, so let's just put the whole thing back together.
Good. All right, let's hope I can wake it up and see if it makes a horrible clicking sound and doesn't work, or if it is fixed. At least for a while. I've actually got a second one of these, and uh, that we're using as a hot spare at the moment, and it's making the same sound. So I think I'll probably pull it down and give it a quick fix too. All right, so let's just see if land control is there. It's taking its time. Ah, yes, that'll do it every time I plugged into the wall. There we go. sounded good. That was the sound at the start there of the motor doing what it should do, which is what we want. And we are in business. That is fantastic. Alright, job well done.